Good afternoon. My name is Lene Palmisano, and I'm the Chair of Committee of the Whole, and I'm going to call to order our regular committee meeting for Tuesday, October 31st. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll and verify the presence of a quorum. Councilmember Payne. Present. Wamsley is absent. Greenville. Present. Vita. Present. Ellison. Here. Osman. Present. Goodman. Present. Jenkins. Present. Chugtai. Present. Koski. Present. Johnson is absent. Vice Chair Chavez. Present. Chair Palmasano. Present. There are 11 members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. We have two items on our agenda today, in addition to a consent agenda and reports of committees that have met this cycle. Additionally, this body is scheduled for another meeting, a joint meeting with the Charter Commission, across the street, the Public Service Building, that starts at 4 p.m. So this meeting will need to adjourn by 3.30. We do have some time scheduled tomorrow as overflow time if we need it. Um, with that, we're going to begin with our consent item. That motion is to direct the city auditor to conduct an analysis of national and local municipal policies and processes relating to renter protections, eviction, diversion, or prevention programs, and anti-displacement programs designed to assist renters and owners, including implementation strategies, resources, and ongoing assessment. Do my colleagues have any comments or questions about this? I am not yet in speaker management. It still says budget for me, but I'll look up and down the dais. Uh, seeing no comments or questions, I'll move to approve the item. Can I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wamsley. Aye. Rainville. Aye. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chugtai. Aye. Koski. Aye. Vice Chair Chavez. Aye. Chair Palmasano. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Thank you. That item carries and will be forwarded to Thursday's City Council meeting. Our second item is in two parts. The first is to receive and file a response to the legislative directive. The second is authorizing staff to pursue preliminary investigation, due diligence, and preliminary design work for a community safety center at the city-owned property at 2600 Minnehaha. Um, additionally, the mayor announced last Friday a new proposed location. So staff is here to provide the response to the legislative directive as well as to offer a revised action for item 2.2 based on the new location. So that revised request for committee action was emailed to all council members and is in front of us on this dais. So I will invite Barbara O'Brien, our Director of Finance and Property Services, and Jared Jeffries from the Office of Community Safety to provide us with a presentation. Oh, or Commissioner Barnett, welcome. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, Council Vice President Palmasano, Council President Jenkins, and uh, Council members. I'm here to talk about the, um, and I have four slides to share with you, uh, to talk about the um, Community Safety Center. I'm excited to talk about uh, the vision of this center and also the next steps for Minneapolis and having its first of kind uh, community safety center. This is one of the reasons that I wanted to be the commissioner uh, is because this is important to me to take that step and to be a part of leading uh, Minneapolis in reimagining and reforming our, our approach to community safety. This council took that first step by creating the Office of Community Safety with the purpose of providing a spectrum of community safety services that meet the unique needs of residents across the city. A community safety center is a place where the city's vision and values come, come to life on what a community safety center could look like. It's a place that has a fully functional police station but also the safety center has, has services and resources that meet the unique needs of a diverse community of residents. This is an opportunity to continue a more holistic 
approach to community safety. This is an example of the ecosystem of services that the Minneapolis Safe and Thriving Community Report envisions. The services and resources provided in the Community Safety Center should be sustainable and have a positive impact on the community. That means we must engage our diverse community of residents and understand what their wants and needs are. With affirmative vote selecting a site today, the Office of Community Safety and the design and implementation team will set a community engagement plan for the Community Safety Center. The design and implementation team is a partnership between the Office of Community Safety and the Office of Public Service. I'm happy to stand for questions about the vision of the Community Safety Center. My colleagues from the Office of Public Service is here to answer any questions about logistics of the site and the criteria. Thank you. I'm not seeing anybody at this time. Uh, for those on speaker management, I'll note that there was a message sent from the clerk that we're just gonna continue to use the queue, the speaker management that's titled budget. So um, you'll see us there. Council Member Payne. Thank you, Madam Chair, and welcome, Commissioner. Uh, obviously, this is your first time presenting to the dais, so I wanna you know, give that grace that you're new around here, but you're not new to this discourse, I don't think. And I think this would be a great time to, for you to share your vision. I mean, one of the things that has frustrated me throughout this process is the degree to which our community has been engaged or not engaged around a vision, and the degree to which we as an institution have communicated, communicated a vision to that community. And it's not to put you on the spot, but just to have a very open, transparent conversation around where some potential directions are, especially from your perspective. Yeah, um, Council uh, Vice President Palmasano, uh, Council President Jenkins, and Council Member Payne, the idea of whatever site you choose is that um, there be a fully functional police uh, station there, but also there would be services there. And the reason why I haven't been specific about the service is because I think it would be important to engage the community on that. But some ideas that could be there are like a partnership with Second Harvest could be there. Um, we could look at um, whether there should be some health services there. You know, what is it that the community really needs? What, what impact could it have by providing services there? Other things to look at, I think, is where our residents have to go to you know, one or two places to get something done. Is there, can we provide an office there with some partnerships and collaboration with the state and county uh, to put a service there where it's one shot? So to be able to provide um, a service in the community uh, that has a positive impact I think is important. Thank you. I'm not seeing any further questions, so. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. And then next, does Director O'Brien come up or? No, okay. Um, well, I will move approval of the revised RCA, which relates, relates to the acquisition of 2633 Minnehaha for a community safety center, third precinct police facility. Um, may I have a second? Second. Um, Further discussion, there are people in queue, starting with Council Member Wansley. Hmm. Uh, first, uh, I did wanna speak to items, uh, this is 2.2 .2 now on the agenda, but also want to make the motion to um, have the legislative directive uh, also be recognized after 2.2. .2. That's, that's just fine. Um, I, I did ask the clerk before the meeting, he said we don't need to formally add it to the agenda because it'll just come up as it comes up. 
Madam, uh, Madam Vice President, just to clarify, on the agenda, 2.1 is receiving and filing the response from the administration. So you will recall this body approved a legislative directive requesting um, a lot of information. I believe the administration submitted that to this body. And so um, this body still has that item to receive and file. And I'm certain there will be questions, discussions, or issues. And I believe, without speaking for Councilmember Wansley, She's uh, sort of signifying that she still has comments or questions or issues yeah. about item one, which is receiving the administration's response to that legislative directive. No, sorry, no, for 2.2. .2. Um, since now we have the motion moved by council uh, vice president to authorize the preliminary investigation. I'll withdraw my comments. We, we sure, certainly should receive and file 2.1 oh, okay. before we take Go up 2.2. .2. I see. So, um, we had moved ahead maybe a little prematurely. I will ask the clerk to receive and file 2.1. And now we're on 2.2, .2, a motion that has been seconded, and we're having further discussion about that. Um, Council Member Wansley, you're asking to deal with your legislative directive immediately after that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, noted. And we will. Uh, Council Member Chavez. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'll let you uh, Chair Parmesano, I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to move an additional motion 2.3 authorizing staff to enter into purchase agreement and conduct preliminary site investigation and design work for a community safety center at the property located at 3716 Cheatham Avenue South. This is the most centralized location in the third precinct that has been revealed to us as council members and next to the light rail, which is easy for transit access. And it would allow the community to be able to be a part of this vision for a holistic public safety system one that encompasses the Minneapolis Police Department, our behavior crisis response teams, our violence prevention professionals, and community resources right there. And it also give the community an alternative to the current proposed site. Many of you asked us to make a decision today, so today I'm proposing a pathway towards that that will bring the community along, which is really important to this process. If you want consensus with the third precinct council members for this third precinct community safety center, this is a fresh slate where you can get that consensus and decide the future of public safety together. Councilmember Chavez, is this a substitute motion then for 2.2? Or it, in addition? It's to, in addition. Okay, then is it all right with you if we take that up after Councilmember Wansley's legislative directive? Or it I was hoping to, to take before. this one before yeah. the... 2633 Minnehaha Avenue South. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I have a prior, uh, this is out of order. We have the mayor's recommendation, recommended site in front of us. If that fails, then council member Chavez's motion might be in order. But right now we have the mayor's recommendation in front of us and that would have to be voted down first. My so understanding I'm not even gonna speak to the merits of it. Hang on, I'm, my understanding is that council member Chavez said in addition to so this is not, this is after, after we've dispensed with that. This is not instead of 2633. We're gonna buy two sites? I think that is the intention of this motion. Yeah, um, so in, going in queue, um, next in queue we have Council Member Koski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just wondering if staff was willing to come up and since we, my understanding we are on 2.2, .2, if we could just, get some more information on 2633 Minnehaha and just some additional information about the site. I know we have the RCA, but if you could just speak to um, just some high level information, then walk us maybe through the RCA for the, for the public, I think that would be really helpful. And then I do have a couple uh, comments or questions after that as well. All right, do we have staff prepared to such a thing? Have you? Asked this previously. All right. Welcome, Chair, Director O'Brien. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Um, Chair Palmasano, Council uh, members, I'm Barbara O'Brien, Director of Property Services for the City of Minneapolis. Um, the question was a little bit more detail about 2633 Minnehaha Avenue. Um, it is, it sits on a 3.39 acres. So um, it's one of the larger sites that um, we have looked at or that is on the list that was in front of you. Um, the building is uh, 78,500 square feet. Of that 15,000 
356 our office space and the remaining 63,144 square feet are, um, it, it's a warehouse um, area. So we would be able to do conversion for not just the precinct and the precinct needs, but we would have a substantial amount of square footage remaining uh, to meet the needs of the community safety center that is being proposed. Um, the uh, original portion of the building was built in 1994 and there was an expansion of approximately double that in 1998, so it's relatively modern. Um, there are 79 surface parking spaces uh, on the, on the uh, street side of the lot. Um, there's currently some loading docks, but we would not need that for the purpose of the precinct or the community safety center. Uh, it has adequate power, electrical, updated LED lighting, um, and it is zoned to be light industrial. And um, it is near Metro line and multiple bus routes that are nearby. Um, Chair Palmasano or Council Member Koski, is there something specific in addition to that that I could answer? No, I think that's helpful. I just had a few other notes or comments. So I, I appreciate just being able to have some more context sure. about this. Uh, Thank you um, also to the commissioner for some added information as well. Um, I just, um, you know, I, I made it clear that when we brought forward the original legislative directive that was spoken to earlier, um, that once we received the mayor's proposal, site analysis, fiscal analysis and review that we would be able to make an informed decision regarding the future community safety center and third precinct facility. And, and that is exactly what I believe we're prepared to do today. I'm grateful that as a result of us taking the time to do the legislative directive, to do our due diligence as a council that we will be proceeding with a community safety center slash third precinct facility rather than just a third precinct facility. Um, and we will be proceeding with the cheapest, quickest option rather than wasting time, effort, and resources. Uh, if we had proceeded with a decision last cycle this option that you have brought forward to us today may never have been reconsidered. When this legislative directive was brought forward, I made it clear that I had no interest in delaying this decision and that my sole interest was ensuring that we were considering all options and making the best decisions we could. Nonetheless, my motives were questioned and misrepresented. So I feel it is um, that it needs to be stated for the record that if my motives weren't clear, they should be now. And I will be voting to support this 2633 Minnehaha Avenue today, which again is the cheapest and quickest option by far. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I did not see, and I apologize, we had a priority queue. We had Councilmember Goodman in the priority queue. Um, maybe that was because she was speaking earlier, but Councilmember Goodman, did you want to make I'm a priority motion? Nope. Okay. City Attorney, you're also in the priority queue. Um, <clears throat> I think once we get to um, Councilmember Chavez's motion, if it's still on the table, I'd, I'd have some comments to make about that. But. Sounds good. I will call on you um, as we get into that item. Councilmember Osmond. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. I have a question about uh, this location, 2633. It looks like we have spent a lot of time looking to uh, different sites and with... Uh, spending a lot of staff time. How long did this uh, location known to the administration? When did they find out? Why was this not an option when we were discussing Century Plaza, um, 2600, and other sites? It looks like uh, this site is a lot cheaper. Um, looks like this is way 50% uh, cheaper than what was proposed, 26 Minneha. Chair Palmasano, Councilmember Osmond, I'll be happy to address that. Um, this property was a property that we had looked at three and a half years ago. Uh, at the time, it was being offered to us for a lease, not for sale, and, um, and that negotiation fell through. 
So the property was not on the market and not within our reach. Um, last Wednesday, I was in contact with the owner and they have uh, decided to get out of leasing or renting this facility and have uh, offered it for sale. And they reached out to us and we have uh, negotiated from there. Um, was this property, I drove by and looks like it, it has been on the market. Am I, is that accurate? So they were offering it for a lease um, oh, okay. and have, have now um, made the decision to offer it for sale. Okay, so we're purchasing what I'm hearing is ten million dollars, correct? Additional four million dollars to fix. Um, in in this additional, how is this gonna fit on this vision of community safety center? What is specifically that will include? Do you do you have details of? When I think about community center or community uh, safety center, it's a place that youth can come or place, you know, community members can come, uh, you know, what will be included in this, uh, and it's only going to cost $4 million, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there, there, there isn't going to be a lot of construction, and also the, the, another question on, on, on the police side of it, um, as I heard uh, for the last three years, what the police officers are, are looking for is a place that they, they can come home, and I mean, they can come to work and, you know, have their... Um, cars park in, in a garage area and, and considering um, money aspect, will that include, and it looks like the, the dollar amount is gonna cost $4 million, uh, and what's needed is less than, I'm guessing, uh, what's proposed, which is $4 million. So Council Member Osman, I know that we just, when we heard from Commissioner Barnett, he talked about how we don't know yet the components of the Public Safety Center section, and he wants to do community engagement to do to figure that out, but are there other is, elements? Is it, I'm just gonna. Is it gonna cost more than more than four million dollars? I mean, right. how could you speak to it? some of those elements, Commissioner? Are you, if you feel ready to speak to some of those elements? Let me try to make sure I understand the question, uh, Vice President Palmasano. Councilmember Osmond, are you saying the ten thousand dollars is the purchase, and we? Ten million. I'm, I mean, sorry, ten thousand. Ten million dollars. <laughs> Wish it was ten thousand, um, and then the four million dollars is to build out the police station. Like everything is, that's needed, right? For the police the community station, safety vision. Right. No, that's just for the police station. Police station. We don't know yet what will go into the other part of the building to give you that price right now, and that's why we need, we really want to make sure that we have the service in the location that's uh, chosen, that we have the service that the community wants. And so it's important for us to figure that part out um, and then build from there. Do we have an idea what those part will be? What kind of community center will be? What kind of services will include? Do we have an idea what those will be? No, a lot of that's gonna be driven by the feedback that we get from the community. Mm -hmm. I said earlier, I just threw out ideas earlier um, of, of what I think can go in there. There's other uh, cities that have similar um, uh, safety centers and they have uh, serv it, those services have um, really uh, been diverse in, in what they have there. There's no set type of services that can go there. But the examples I gave is we could partner with the county or and the state both um, and have a service there. Um, I don't know, it could be a service center. It could be social security department. I don't know what the community is gonna tell us that they want. Like I said earlier, it could be a partnership with Second Harvest to provide food. I, I just don't know until we hear back from the community on that. Thank you so much. And my, my comment is that I, I think this is a smart move. And I wish this decision was front of us uh, longer than it took. Uh, it's cheaper, less than 50% than what uh, the proposal 26 is Minnehaha. But um, it's right not far away from the old site. It's right in, in I believe, in, in Seward neighborhood area, a couple blocks away from Ward 6 boundaries. Um, 
but yeah, the, uh, I guess there, there's a lot of work that that uh, as a council members and also as administration side of it that need to be done to make sure this place fits the vision of the community center we're talking about. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. If I might, um, I, I think this is a question that you stated in your initial remarks, Council Member Osman, you asked to make sure that the parking considerations were included. And I think that might be a question for Director O'Brien and she's shaking her head yes. So this is inclusive of that parking so that you have your questions fully answered. Next in queue is Council Member Wansley. Thank you, uh, Council Vice President. Um, I've also had a lot of questions and conversations since learning about uh, this last minute proposal um, when Mayor Fryer announced it on Friday. Um, and just wanna take some time to debunk a few things I've heard over the past couple of days and a few weeks in regards to the site process and this current site um, that we're considering. So as I just heard even now, um, we're being told that this is the cheapest option to pursue. Um, and that is true if we're only looking to pursue a police precinct. Um, Mayor Fry's own memo uh, actually communicates that it will take an additional seven million to eight point five million dollars to transform this um, site into an actual community safety center, meaning including the community safety functions. That's literally in the memo. So the fact that the RCA that we're being um, asked to consider that's attached to twenty six thirty three mini ha ha only includes funding for the precinct portion does uh, trouble me um, in the sense that are we essentially moving forward with a third precinct, but just with a different name. Um, also, there's been lots of conversations around needing a building first before we can do anything different. Um, and I think it's definitely a mistake to believe that uh, a building simply alone can be the catalyst towards uh, moving us in a different direction when it comes to our public safety system, especially if we're not trying to replicate the status quo. Um, yet still, as we just heard from our uh, new commissioner, no one has been able to um, provide information on how this process will happen, how we'll make sure we're not reverting to the status quo, um, what it will look like. Um, it's lots of speculations of sec second harvest of what we're gonna put in here. And most importantly, how residents will be able to receive a measurable benefit of this and also be part of shaping it. Um, so I've heard um, people in the many conversations I've had over the past couple of days, um, I've heard people say that we can't have a plan without a building, but we also can't have a building without a plan. And I know I'm not the only one who knows this. Since 2019, former and current members of the city's Capital Long Range Improvement Committee have emphasized that the city should have a public safety plan. Um, long in place before making multi-million dollar investments into building infrastructure. Um, so a big picture analysis is required for investments um, into projects on everything, it seems, except police buildings. Um, furthermore, the CLIC has also written about how the city's lack of strategic policy direction on public safety has severely hampered their ability to provide advice on capital investments. And they're even urging us to immediately begin crafting well thought out proposals, um, which thank God we have the Safe and Thriving Communities Report, but also to then implement them, execute on them, take the time to pilot and assess it before we start making long-term decisions. Um, I wanna also note the click sentiments are not in isolation and they've also been shared with us by residents at large who have also been very clear about what they want from the city. And the conclusion from the third precinct engagement process was that residents actually want a plan for comprehensive public safety before um, a conversation of, about a building transpires. Um, many of my constituents, especially those in Seward, have also voiced not wanting a precinct in this vicinity. And yet all of this information is being ignored and it gives the appearance that any feedback that is oppositional to us doing things different, the status quo or what the mayor is looking to proceed with is thus Ill illegitimate. And if we don't want to do public engagement, um, you know, or if we do want to do that, we should be willing to 
um, follow up on the conclusions that those public engagements um, yield. And what we saw from this process is that our, my constituents, I think residents have shown they do not trust the city to take this work seriously in transforming public safety. Um, and quite honestly, they shouldn't. The city purposefully ignored warning signs for decades and refused to take action to improve public safety until it got so bad that it sparked a global uprising and the federal government and the state human rights uh, department had to intervene to get our police department under c control because we refused to do it for decades. So it shows good sense that even in theory, this concept of community safety centers, that many of our residents don't actually trust us to, to deliver on the words that we keep saying. And I think it's not simply a distraction and deflection to talk about physical buildings, it's actually a dangerous one that impedes systemic change that we need to be focusing on advancing, that also has to be grounded in plans and showing the public that we are consistently delivering on those plans and not reverting back and trying to move the status quo of policing but under different names and, and mantras. Um, and for those reasons, I won't be supporting this item. Um, and yet I look forward to working with my constituents to actually um, deliver on the promise that they've asked us to repeatedly show up for, which is that comprehensive safety side. Thank you. I do want to note that the memo clearly states each proposal here has a seven to eight million dollar ad for all sites for those pu for unknown to, yet to be determined public safety center type components. Um, um, I will push back. I'm speaking on page uh, four to be exact, where it explicitly states 2633 Minnehaha Avenue baseline projections for combining community safety functions with a precinct assume 16,000 square feet and associated pro uh, parking at a projected additional cost of $7 million to $8.5 million for a combined total of $21 million to $22.5 million. That is not what's repeatedly stated in the memo that I just read from, at least on page four. So I took that directly from that page, so I want to be able to cite that. Thank you. Um, Director O'Brien, would you be willing to just give us a couple of clarifying yeah. statements? The, um, uh, Chair Palmasano um, and Council Member Wansley, the baseline projection of $7 million to $8.5 million is applied unilaterally over all of the, um, the proposed sites. If you look on... Um, in the document, and I'm sorry, I don't know what page it is, but I believe that it's Appendix B. Um, you will find a two-page document that looks like this. And um, there's a, an asterisk or a note on the bottom that also refers to that exact language, um, which says a baseline, assuming a baseline, of 16,000 square feet, that's, a, that's an approximation because we don't know yet, and assuming uh, 75 parking spaces and uh, allowing for a 7 million to 8.5 million on top of any of the sites. So um, the document Appendix B and the six options the prices that we are quoting or that we are projecting are for the baseline of a precinct, and then it's asking for an assumption of that 7 to 8.5, no matter what site. Actually, a good follow-up question on this, because I know this was a contentious point of concern with the first precinct um, co-location model. Where did we get a uniform figure? Because we had a... One of the things with the co-location site at Century Plaza was what is this $6.1 million of unprogrammed funding Correct. or unprogrammed one floor? We're talking about just one floor in a building. Mm -hmm. And now we're assuming, let's say, that price associated with one floor is now uniform for even more space in other potential sites. 
Yeah, it is just making uh, an assumption that could be applied uniformly across any site or any, any one of the options in front. So until we know the defined program, uh, it, it could likely be smaller. Um, in, this, in this particular case, we have on-site parking already. So at 2633, so some of those things are um, uh, can be a reduction of that dollar projection, but in order to be comparative apples to apples, we selected a baseline square footage and a baseline um, parking requirement that would make all of the sites uh, equal in consideration. So again, it seems like a lot of the that information is not included at least on this the page where you talk about the site because right now it only talks about the 14 million and this is where the figure of this 2633 being the cheapest option if you're saying then seven to eight million dollars which will bring this to 20 something mm -hmm. million dollars in total for this precinct that's also equivalent to the total that was estimated for the co-location so is the idea then the co-location co site? Because again, we have the unprogrammed floor there that has basically the range that you're saying. It seems like it's the same price. It, no, um, it would, it, um, the, the co-located site would have been uh, more expensive. More than the 25 million. So there will be an additional 7 million attached onto that in addition to the $6.1 million that's indicated for the unprogrammed floor? Not for the co-location site, no. The co-location, uh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, for all sites unilaterally, the, um, the 6.1 in, which is listed as option three in um, appendix B mm -hmm. would have just been for the, for the purchase of the floor. It would not have um, included any of the build out. Remember, it would have just been a shell. So we would have later had to have built it out um, and mm -hmm. made it fit the, the program for a community safety center. Again, we, um, we selected a square footage, a dollar amount, and associated parking that could be applied across all six options. So yes. Um, Councilmember Wansley, it would have um, option three, which was the co-location, co would have had additional dollars for the build out of that floor. So the 25.5 million or 25.8 million is inaccurate or not well, certain? No, it's not inaccurate. It is a reflection of um, the, the purchase. In this case, it would have been the purchase of five floors and four of the floors being built out. And, um, and and uh, the middle floor would have been purchased, but would have been shell space. Once a program for the community safety center was developed, then we would have had to have moved forward to build it out, and we would have needed additional funds. So we again we have chosen a square footage, a, a parking requirement and an estimate that could be unilaterally applied across all sites so that we could compare apples to apples. No, I get that, but still saying the 25.8 million that's mm -hmm. shared here, saying for 2633, yep. the 14 million, it's really higher than that. Because again, we keep talking about what's more fiscally responsible, so to actually have more accurate like estimates pr presented. So 2633 says, if we were to move forward with the third precinct and both a community safety center, we're actually looking at a higher price tag than 14 million. That is accurate. It would it would be higher, mm -hmm. but without a program uh, which is yet to be developed, we we can only do a baseline comparison that can be fair across all considerations. No, absolutely understand that. But again, saying these figures would be inflated essentially. Yes. Thank you. Next in queue is Councilmember Vita. Uh, thank you, Chair Palmasano. Just a couple quick questions for clarity. Um, so the 2633 site, it, does it have additional space or is it going to be full with the police station, with the third precinct? 
Thank you. Chairman Masano, Councilmember Vita, yes, uh, the site has additional square footage uh, within the building and uh, in the parking lot that would um, be reserved or be available for meeting the needs of the community safety center. Okay, so we would, essentially we would be looking for programming that fits in the current space we have. We wouldn't be trying to build out on like say the 75 parking, because you said there's 75 mm -hmm. parking spots. 79. 79, okay. Yep, because you do. Okay. So, and uh, there could be a combination of, of, of building out and or um, fitting within the uh, square footage of the existing building. That is yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. And so then you probably want to stay. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Barbara. So then do you, the, the additional site, well, first of all, let me just say for the record, I am a fan of the current site because it's the cheapest. And I've heard from lots of people from the third precinct who feel like their voices have been drowned in the conversation around where a precinct should be located. So the only reason why I'm entertaining this is because the dollar amount. If it's fiscally responsible, I'm with it. But I need to understand you know, what, what makes this um, a value to the people. I have had a lot of people reach out to me since the mayor made this announcement by saying, you know, I know that I told you that I would prefer the site, but this second option seems like a really good option based on the money, based on the location of the neighborhood, and, um, you know, just the overall vision of what it could be. I don't think anyone who's reached out to me, and there's been hundreds of people reaching out to me over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so it, people are saying like, I don't expect that this is gonna happen. Like this community center is gonna come up as soon as the third precinct comes up. And so the precinct may be first, and then we have an option to like budget this in, correct? Mm -hmm like phase in with different years over time. So we're not, prom are we promising, I guess I should ask well, it this way. Are we promising that when this building opens that it is going to be a full service community center? So I don't think, um, I, I don't think that we can make that promise at this point because there is work um, that needs to be done in terms of programming. Now to what degree, um, uh, and I'm, actually queuing in on a specific word that you said, and that is full. Um, I, maybe there, um, the Office of Community Safety may have some things that we can include uh, right away and initially, um, but that is to be determined by the Office of Community Safety. And could you, do you foresee, I mean, I worked in a building for many years that many organizations were co-located in, and some pay rent, some, you know, um, leased, some owned. So do you foresee this property as potentially being some way to generate some funding to help with the cost? We, yeah, I, we simply don't know at this point. Okay, okay, all right. And then um, what is, what have you talked to them about the timeline for this? Is this something they just saw in the news and thought, oh, let's try again? Is this something we can miss out on or is this, like, are they around for a while to figure out what decision we're making at the council for this specific site? So the, uh, the owner, um, again, once again, they, um, they had this site, this building, uh, with the intent of maintaining it as a leasable site. So their intent for, and I can only speak for the last three, three and a half years that I have known about this piece of property, um, the intent was for them to hang on to it and be landlords and lease it. And um, I can't speak to what prompted them um, or what may have incited them to change their mind and offer the property for sale, um, but they have and, and did reach out to us and we um, engaged with them immediately last Wednesday. Thank you. Council Member Rainville. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, hats off to the staff for working so hard and so fast and so smartly. I completely understand the comparisons of the numbers that you're doing. I'll be voting for this today. 
I can't say this loud enough or long enough. The people of the third precinct deserve to have a precinct in there. This is the opportunity to make your vision clear, Commissioner, about what a community safety uh, will look like. And so I'm voting today to go forward on this. Thank you. Council Member Ellison. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to get some clarity about the ability for this to be a public safety center at the time that it opens. Um, I've, I've got a lot of questions after the discussion that we've had, but what's the timeline for doors open on this facility? Commissioner Burnett. Council Vice President uh, Palmasano, President Jenkins, uh, Council Member Ellison, my understanding is that um, at least the precinct side can be done within a year. That we, I believe we know. The piece about what's gonna be in the other side really has to do with the design and implementation team. I think you had a, I think slide three kind of shows who's involved in that part of it. And that part of it also involves engagement. So having that engagement piece to decide what's going to go in there will then give us our timeline and when that can open. So, you know, it, it just depends on what, what's going to be there. Yeah. Um, so to the extent that I think, you know, this idea of a public safety center has um, maybe been a bit of a relief or offered some optimism for folks who have been skeptical, it feels a little bit like a bait and switch to say, by doors open, it actually won't be that. And so I'm, 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 I'm really struggling with, with that as well. And, and we did a whole, I think, was it three months worth of engagement about, um, you know, that started at the top of the summer, roughly. Um, and after that, you know, uh, the, the urgency sort of ramped up, right? It didn't really exist before the engagement, uh, not on the third floor, it didn't. Uh, and then all of a sudden, this press, this, this full court press sort of happened from the from the administration, which is fine, right? We we need this facility, but to have just three months of engagement, to have the results of that engagement, really split council members who represent the areas, split people who rep who live in the area, um, and then to sort of address some of the concerns by saying we're going to have a public safety center, and then saying, well, first give us our thing right, the, the third precinct, and then we'll open a public safety center at some, some point, on some date uncertain. I'm struggling with that a little bit, and I'm sort of wondering why the urgency, why can't we sort of determine um, uh, the, the, the outline of the public safety center in order to have it executed or ready to, ready to go by a date certain, by doors open? Okay. The reason why I'm not promising that, I mean, this design and implementation team needs to get together. And if we're flying through the engagement and that's happening, uh, maybe it can happen when the doors open. We, the one thing we know is that it would take a year for that. It's not going to take a year to get the engagement done. But once that piece is done, we'll know exactly what services can be there. And I'll, I'll just give you these examples. If we're just talking about a food shelter, that's totally different than saying, hey, this community wants a full service center where you can go get driver's license and uh, get your birth certificates. That's a little bit different type of build out. So that's why I'm saying it could open up at the same time. That's, that, that just depends on what's gonna be there. Okay. I. Um... <clears throat> You know, I, I would want us to, if we're going to say it's a public safety center, yes. I would really want us to be able to execute that. So that, that, that's the only point that I wanted to make. I'm really happy for the timeline. It is good to know that this site um, became available for purchase just, was it last Wednesday? Was that Wednesday. The, yeah, last Wednesday. Um, I do know that, um, uh, uh, you know, there's been discussion up on this dais about uh, that Councilmember Chavez sort of has another location that he believes that the community would be strongly interested in, and I'm wondering what what is the. I, I understand that it's not in queue, but but and so we're not considering it uh, for a vote at the moment. But wondering why um, 
it wouldn't be appropriate to look uh, at that property. Um, and just that might be a question for the attorneys. It might be a question. But um, but yeah, just wanted to get some clarity there, because if we've got if we're starting to gain some consensus um, for, from council members of the area, um, wondering why we would take a potentially divided vote today uh, and and uh, and and not not seize on that opportunity. Councilmember Ellison, it was my understanding that Councilmember Chavez's motion is in addition to a decision on this, not um, dependent on such, but I'll ask the Councilmember to speak for himself about his intentions with that. I get, <clears throat> thank you, Chair Palisano. Yeah, my motion would be in addition to, would be an additional vote on a separate site. I think Councilmember Ellison's uh, point is that why not move forward on both sites, essentially is what he's saying. I see, is, does that characterize uh, I guess, yeah, I guess for my own clarity, my perception was that we would, um, I want to support Council Member Chavez, uh, in, in the Cheatham Avenue location. Uh, my, what I assume though, is that if we take this vote today, we're basically saying yes to the build out on 2633. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, and so, um, you know, on one hand, why would we? Why wouldn't we take up the Cheatham Avenue site if there's if there's some building consensus there? I guess is is my basic question. So it, it it'll be next. That's what it looks like. It's a bunch of grain okay, we're, we're off topic right now, um, but I promise to come back. Okay. To this. Thank you. Um, Council President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to comment. You know, as. Um, uh, representative that my district is half of my district is served by the third precinct and consequently this location is further away from my district however it still does present us an opportunity to move forward on the third precinct at a cost that is um, uh, reasonable and um, less even with the additional build out of a public safety center which um, I am 100% committed to having a community engagement process that helps us to determine what those services will be in that facility it still comes out um, less expensive than some of the other options that we <clears throat> have been discussing. And I, I do know that the, the Cheatham Avenue site has been um, explored uh, previously. And so consequently, you know, I'm going to be supporting this 2633 site. It offers us the opportunity to move forward with location and we 100% have to have community engagement on what the services will be I don't want to leave that to the administration I don't want to leave it to the commissioner to determine I want our community to be a part of that and so um, I will be supporting this uh, motion today. Thank you. Councilmember Osman. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Vice President. It's really sad to hear that uh, the opening day of this site, when, when we spend so much money, we're not gonna have community safety center as we are trying to continue to sell it to the public that we're opening all new, you know, revision uh, public safety and MPD and now learning that uh, public safety center is not going to be there. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be there the day of opening. The police are going to move in, and there is nothing there for the community. That's troubling. Thank you. Councilmember Vita. Thank you. I just um, wanted to quickly share. A couple weeks ago, the mayor and I went to visit the uh, BCR's new site in Ward 1. And the first thing you notice when you walk in the door is how beautiful 
their office space is, how warm and welcoming the office space is. They gave us a tour. It, it was a really nice time. And um, all the staff who gave us a tour said right away, it's really important where first responders get to go to work, where their offices are, where they get to relax, where they get to take a break. And this conversation is reminding me of that. I get it, we wanna serve the city well, but we also have some officers who are first responders who need a space just like the BCR, a space that they can go back to, relax when something goes wrong, take a moment, take some breaths. So I, I want us to really just think about that part of it when we're making our decision. It is imperative to these officers' health, to anyone who is gonna be responding. That is, we, like this site they're in now, they're all over the place. They're not even in the precinct. They need a workplace. They need a productive workplace. They need somewhere where they can go and process these things. We have them on mandatory overtime, at a minimum. Let's give them somewhere nice to eat, somewhere to relax. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I put myself in queue here. Um, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm hearing things like it's really disappointing. I'm hearing things like it's bait and switch. I need to point out that every single option here from the beginning has had what the public safety center component looks like decoupled from the decision at hand. And I also heard Commissioner Barnett not say it's absolutely not going to be ready day one, but that it depends. It depends on where they're at and community engagement at the time. Um, but I do know this, any other site would result in no safety center for even more years because of the time that it would take to build. Um, so this site is the fastest way to a safety center and a precinct, bar none, from what I have heard and what I've read in the report, et cetera. Council Member Rainbow. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, could I get you to uh, uh, answer a question for me, please? And I appreciate your professionalism about now committing to a timeline for the full build out of the, the public safety center. But in your uh, professional view, walk us through about how soon those doors would open up. And even if this was just in a limited, only four or five services building out towards 10. You know, speak the truth in your mind, please. Council Vice President Palmasano, President Jenkins, uh, Council Member Rainville. The reason why you're not getting a commitment from me on the exact timeline is the piece that everyone is concerned about, and that's community engagement. Right? So the you know, I said this when um, I was here before about this piece. Of, you don't want me, you don't want anyone to tell the community this is the service that's going in there. You want to hear from them, you want to get feedback from them to hear what is it that you want to be in, your, in that community. You have a very diverse group of residents in the third precinct, so what's going to serve those residents? And it's not that it won't open all at the same time. It all depends on what service is there. And we're going to have engagement. We're going to do that. And so I will work as hard as I can to see that, that, it's, that it opens at the same time, but I'm not going to skip the engagement piece. So if the engagement takes longer than when the place actually opens, then it's just going to take longer. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. That's my truth for you. Thank you. Did you understand, uh, Councilman Osmond, was that, that answer was for you? Um, what the community wants to see. We know what happened on Third Precinct. Um, it burned down. There's a lot of emotional attachment in there. 
if we're going to bring back a site, a third precinct site, the opening day should include a place that everyone is welcome, including the public safety center that you have been presenting. It's troubling, again, if we only have MPD operating there, when we spend so much time and so much money and not have the first day a place people feel they can come and enjoy in Seward neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I also want to point out that this seems to be how we are looking at every single one of these options, apples to apples. Council Member Wansley. Thank you. This is probably for staff. Um, in pertaining to the implementation team, can you let me know on the engagement side, it says OCS comms and engagement. Um, are all those positions filled under that bracket in OCS? Vice President Palmasano, uh, Council President Jenkins, uh, Council Member Wansley. Are you talking, I think it's slide three, the engagement piece where it says um, OCS comms and engagement? Mm -hmm. No, right now we're in the process of um, hiring a, a, a director of communications that would head up that part of it and be a part of, and also, as you know from, um, previous conversations, I believe, with uh, then interim Commissioner uh, Sheehy, there's also that design and implementation part of um, the Office of Community Safety as well. So I don't believe those, those positions right now are filled. Okay. So right now going into implementation phase, uh, we don't have staffing for a crucial component of that one. I will name also for what, infrastructure. Can I just respond? Yeah, go for, for it. A minute? Yeah. If you're saying under me, right, under under here, can I put a comms person there? Yes, but this is a partnership with uh, the Office of uh, Public Service. And so what I would say is I know that we could pull other people if we needed to start like at this moment. Yes. I'm interested in you bringing that up because I know in budgets, um, you mentioned OP, well, PMI also being a critical yes. partner in this yes. work. PMI right now has an 89% vacancy rate and have one employee. So right now, this lets me know we don't have the staff and capacity from PMI, which even in the memo says it's going to be a critical role or driving force behind implementing this in addition to not having staffing capabilities under OCS. So I think saying this, this again reinforces, we haven't even allocated staffing infrastructure behind getting the public safety component of this proposal prioritized in addition to a third precinct. So I just wanted to get that clarified, um, but thank you, you, you definitely did that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Goodman, and then I would ask that we vote and move on. There are other things that we have um, to consider today um, that are walk-ons. Go ahead, Council Member. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair, or my, Madam Chair. Um, this does not need to be divisive. We owe it to our employees to have a place for them to work. We owe it to the community to have a place for the police to work out of, and as much as folks don't want to hear about this being a real estate transaction, it is a simple real estate transaction. So let me describe it to you. In real life, when we work with a partner who wants to build deeply affordable housing, they don't come up with an entire plan and then go look for a site. They find a site and then they determine what they're going to put on it. And this is very parallel to that. We've asked staff to come up with a site where we can house officers from the third precinct. Council members have rightly said, we think it needs it to be a different model. It needs to be something bigger and more than that. And the administration came back and said, we can do more on this site. 
And we've said, well, we want to know what you're going to do. And they've said, well, we want to ask the community what they're going to do. And that's where we're at. We need to pick a site so that we can house the officers in the third precinct and work towards building out a community safety center, knowing that this site is ready to go for the most pressing need, has the space for the other needs, falls into a price tag that doesn't mean we need to be making money in the base, printing money in the basement of City Hall. Perhaps if everyone put more time into working with the administration to envision what a public safety center could look like, instead of forcing staff to come up with 29 different sites and then picking apart each one, the public safety center would be further along. I don't hear very many people saying, yes, I want to work with you on that. I hear lots of people saying, no, we don't like this, we don't like that, come back to us with this, come back to us with that. But there are a lot of people on this council who have expertise in this area and could volunteer to work with the administration and our new director of public safety to come up with what the alternatives could be and should be. And we need to get beyond this real estate decision in order to start envisioning what a new public safety center would look like, including the community's point of view. Thank you. I'm seeing nobody else in queue, and I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. This is for the approval of 2633 as a site for the third precinct. Council Member Payne. Nay. Wamsley. Nay. Rainville. Yes. Vita. Aye. Ellison. Nay. Osman. No. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chugtai. Nay. Koski. Aye. Chavez. No. Chair Palmasano. Aye. There are six ayes and six nays. Thank you. Um, that motion fails. Um, I ask to make a motion that we send this item forward without recommendation so that we can maybe have a little bit more time to have conversation and pick this up on Thursday. So moved. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley. Nay. Rainville. Yes. <laughs> Vita. Aye. Ellison. Excuse me, this is on Chavez's no, motion? This is, no, no. Okay. Moving it forward without recommendation. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chugtai. No. Koski. Aye. Vice Chair Chavez. No. Chair Palmasano. Aye. There are nine ayes and three nays. Thank you. It will go forward to the City Council meeting this Thursday um, for consideration. Uh, next, we have a motion by Councilmember Chavez that he's added to the agenda. I'll invite you to introduce your motion. And then I know the City Attorney has some, has a priority motion to speak to it. Chair Palmasano, I'd like to move an additional motion, as I mentioned earlier, authorizing staff to enter into a purchase agreement and conduct preliminary site investigation and design work for a community safety center at the property located at 3716 Cheatham Avenue South. Um, thank you. City Attorney, did you have something you wanted to start? Uh, Chair Palmasano, uh, council members, um, this motion, it's a little confusing to me. It, it feels like you're, you're directing staff to enter into, I mean, you're directing staff, which is, is not the council's prerogative. It's the mayor's prerogative to identify a location and then bring that forward to council for approval, not, not the opposite way. Um, if what the council is looking for is information about whether this particular location could support a community safety center, I think that that could be a legislative directive directed to the mayor for that kind of information. Um, but but the motion as it's written um, appears out of order to me. Councilmember Chavez, did you want to retract this motion? Uh, no, I disagree with that opinion. I, I don't think that's... Um, I don't think that's something that we can 
do here. But I'll go forward with a little bit of discussion on this. First in queue is Council Member Goodman. Well, Madam Chair, I don't know that it's worth having a discussion. You don't get to just tell the city attorney, I don't agree with you, it's appropriate when it's not. So I'm not sure it's worthy of having discussion, but I suppose if you want to have discussion, I'd like Council Member um, Chavez to tell us what the price w is, how long it would take, what the plan is for remediating the grain elevators, how long it would take to tear them down, what, how we would do the environmental remediation, where would all the money come from? When the, the administration has analyzed this site, I was in the meeting with Council Member Johnson when this site came up, and initially I thought it was a good site. And I discussed it with staff, and then I dug into it myself. I showed Council Member Ellison and Council Member Osman a photo of the site, and I'm happy to pull it up again so you can all take a look at it. But the last time I checked, tearing down grain elevators is a massive effort, and it's extremely expensive, and it puts a massive amount of environmental liability on us. So this is just another let's delay this. Otherwise, Council Member Chavez could explain to me how he would see this working since he brought this forward. In, you don't I mean, need to respond to this if you don't want. I also think this isn't about delaying a vote on 2633 unless no, you're going to No, I think this is separate about. So this is to add an additional community safety center elsewhere in the community. Yes, I mean, the, the initial thing is that I want to bring forward this option. Mm -hmm. You all clearly indicated to the city council when we passed the legislative directive that you expect us all to make a decision. I came forward with my decision based on the conversations that you all asked me on the dais. And this is what I'm proposing, that we can move forward on a new vision of public safety that brings the community along, simply put. Okay, it, I don't wanna, I don't you wanna know, get into it. You Excuse can, me. and the one thing I will say right now, and I'm gonna say this out loud, it is frustrating the way you treat me in public. It is disgusting, it is despicable. And you don't get to treat you don't get to treat me like that. I do not do that to you when you're talking. I don't get to, I don't do that to you when you're talking to me when you're on the dais. I don't do that. I don't do that right. to you. Thank I don't you. do that to you. I'm going to call decorum. Now you call decorum it, when I'm talking. Nope. I thought you were done saying now what you, you needed to say. I, of course. Um, that is not the case. I called it on both of you. Of course. Um, I don't know that we need to belabor this, but Council President Jenkins, do you have any? Well, I, I guess my question was, is this a standalone community center or would it include um, MPD officers as well for clarity? This is the same thing that I was proposing as a site. It does include MPD. And that would be up to the Office of Community Safety to also determine the vision for that as well. You all asked me to come up with this. So issue. we would have two third precincts? No, but this was, you asked me to come up with a location. I'm coming up with my, my, my preference of a location. All right. I, uh, I'm not sure if that answers my question, but it's fine. Councilmember Payne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I voted no on the last location because it feels that there's this false sense of urgency and some sort of desire to create this uh, perception that we're dysfunctional. Uh, and the reality is that none of us were here when it was the most important moment to start making some of these critical decisions. The third precinct burned down in 2020. We were elected in 2021. We were sworn in in 2022. There was a good year and a half where something could have been decided. And we've spent the better part of this year reorganizing the deck chairs for our government structure while not taking up this question. And so I, I think what Council Member Chavez is trying to bring forward is an option that puts us in the right sequence. <coughs> and the reason that this is even approximating controversy is because there's been such a breakdown in trust between the community and the city. And trust is not some you know, magical, mystery, mysterious thing. It's, it's a really straightforward thing. The way that you build trust is you say what you're gonna do and then you follow through on it. You don't say what you're gonna do and do something else. And you know, what I was seeing is another example of you know, saying one thing and doing another. I mean, 
It says we're going to build a comprehensive community safety center, but it sounds like what we're actually going to do is build a police precinct. And maybe if you trust us, that will eventually become a community safety center. But as I just described, we don't have a well of trust with our community to believe us when we say that this is going to be our path forward. And so I'm trying to get people to listen to the community so that there is some trust that's built up. And right now, we just don't have any. And so I support Councilmember Chavez's motion because he's actually done the work to build trust with the community. The community listens to him. The community respects him. Um, Councilmember Wansley's built a lot of trust in her community. Nobody asked whether or not she wanted this new comprehensive safety center asterisk in her ward. And so there is a process that we can do this that builds trust with the community and brings everybody on board with celebration and excitement and enthusiasm. We're not going to get there by coming up with new proposals on a Friday and forcing a vote on a Tuesday. That's, that, that's not the basis for building trust. And so what I believe Councilmember Chavez is trying to accomplish is to build trust with the community, bring the community along to a future public safety center that includes MPD and their base of operations in conjunction with community services. And what we need to do is have this location, 3716 Cheatham Avenue, considered for that future. And so whatever language needs to be made to make this within the purview of city council so that we can have that process moving forward based on trust, bringing community along, let's, let's figure that out. And we have another hour and 10 minutes to craft the language on this motion to be able to do that. Thank you. I see Councilmember Wansley in the priority motion queue, so I'm going to move her ahead of Councilmember Chuck Tan. Um, thank you, Council Vice President. Um, my uh, priority motion is um, in regards to the legislative, I'm sorry, the 2.2 um, action that we just uh, advanced uh, for 2633 Minnehaha Avenue. Um, it would have made sense to take this up afterwards too, um, but it's basically a legislative directive that I'm bringing forward um, and knowing that the vote today is just one of many um, steps that has to happen um, before we outright purchase the site and possibly do a community safety center. Um, so this legislative directive um, is an attempt to dig deeper and have Mayor Fry and his administration finally answer the questions people have repeatedly been asking for, um, because I heard a lot of I don't knows today, and Minneapolis residents have been hearing I don't know for three years as it pertains to public safety, and they want some responses. Um, additionally, there will be a new council next year, and I imagine that they may want more information before signing off on a multi-million dollar infrastructure investment that has yet to demonstrate what public good it will provide besides having um, parking um, spaces and, and showers for just strictly our police officers. Um, so my legislative directive is meant to provide this body and the public a blueprint of what this is beyond the means of, of walls and how it fits into a comprehensive public safety system beyond policing. Um, these questions need to be answered. And while I've heard some of my colleagues insist that we move forward I, I want to be clear, there is no moving forward without accountability. Um, my constituents, as well as many third precinct residents within Seward, um, would love to have answers to these questions, and it's information that's needed right now, um, and it's critical information for us to be able to make informed decisions um, in the next year. So it, I wanted to bring forward this legislative directive in case 2633 um, passed, um, and, you know, with that information, I really look forward to working with the various stakeholders in my ward where this is being um, forced through um, to ensure that we're not just moving forward with a third precinct that's rebranded under a very different name. All right. Um, Councilmember Wansley, um, I believe since this is a priority motion, we will deal with it 
immediately. Is that Madam okay. Vice President, I would suggest that it's a motion. We need a second to this motion. It does relate to the action we just took. It makes sense to take this up one now. I would suggest we table the Chavez proposal temporarily, take up the legislative directive, clear the speaker management queue. Rachel can put in there that we're on the legislative directive now. Those who want to speak to it can sign up, clear that out. And then um, we can come back and take up uh, 2.3, which was added as the Chavez motion. And recognizing Councilmember Shugtai should be first in queue when we get there. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Councilmember Chavez, we're going to reconcile this first and then come back to yours. Um, Councilmember Wansley, you're requesting that we add consideration to this, um, not really add it, not couple it with our upcoming vote on 2633 at Council, but rather to consider this as well. Um, I second your motion. Um, Councilmember Chugtai? Oh, oh, you're not in queue anymore for this. Okay. It was to speak on 2.3. All right. Um, Councilmember Koski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to get some clarity, um, perhaps from the author, Councilmember Wansley, on uh, bullet point number two here a list of specific community safety functions and breakdowns. I think we've heard today um, that the plan from city staff is that they want to do community engagement. So I am, you know, before they list out a specific uh, functions and breakdowns. So I am wondering if we can uh, think about this maybe in a different way. I know that I had worked and we had worked together on a legislative directive that included information of how we could get that community engagement. Um, so just wanted to just note that I think that they have, you know, they have informed us that um, already that they want to get this information from community engagement. I think the, the proper question at this moment is how is the uh, administration going to involve and inform community to get that uh, information versus getting us a specific list at this point? I'm going to ask actually clarification to your question because you talk about breakdowns. So, um, part where we talk about breakdowns in my legislative directive is two, where it asks for a list of specific community safety functions and breakdowns. If you're talking about community engagement, that's part of the work plan. So staff should be able to present a work plan, which is you know set reflected in the memo that talks about what tools of participatory engagement. I um, mean, I list some examples here, like what was used with Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, that can all be brought forward, and that's information that the public does want to know about. It's also in presidents and how we present information on other key projects uh, that we've done, like truth and reconciliation or even public works infrastructure projects. There's always a community engagement plan that's also flushed out. So that's a crucial component of information to have as we're making that decision. A number of you all raised wanting to have the community engage in this process of shaping what the community safety will look like. And this lets the community know, okay, what processes, what frameworks the city is going to be utilizing to meet them halfway to do that work. So was very intentional in how I crafted that language. And I think it reflects the, the purpose of what's needed for next year. Okay, I guess I was just clarifying number two is that you're asking for a list of specific community safety functions and specific programs and I think I just heard from the city staff, and maybe you guys can help me. Would you be able to get that specific safety, you know, th th that list by January 31st um, when you have just told me that you want to do community engagement first in order to get that? So if maybe city staff could answer that. And while you're coming up, again, if you read the legislative directive in its totality, two flows from one where it asks for a comprehensive overview of how um, we're going to implement the Safe and Thriving Communities uh, Report, specifically the service continuum model. Because what was not talked in all of this is we already have a service model that's incorporated in the report that has categories around preventative, restorative, and responsive. So if we were doing programs and services, ideally it would fit under that. So um, from my understanding, if that's the blueprint for this community safety center, 
and the community safety functions that will be built from it, it would be good to know what are those. And those are things that can easily be consulted with by Dr. Oftelli or whoever else is at the implementation level, but I'll let you respond to Councilmember Koski's question. Commissioner. Thank you. Vice President Palmasano, Council Member Jenkins, Council Member, excuse me, Koski, I can give you a list of services that could be in that building. That list would only be the list of services that I know that others have used in other cities. I can take some of uh, my preliminary conversations with folks and give a list but that list that I would give you uh, would not include the engagement with the community. So you're right that my, no matter what site you choose, um, and, I, and I'm trying to repeat this over and over, whatever site you choose, there has to be community engagement for the services that will be there. So um, yes, I can give you a list of here are some services that can go there. Uh, but that list, at, if I gave that list to you in a week or so, that would not include the engagement on what is it that the community wants in that particular building for services. Thank you. Thank you, that's uh, helpful. Um, and you know, the, in essence, uh, Councilor Monte, I appreciate you bringing this information forward, uh, you know, it's the first that we're looking at this and kind of delving into it. This is really important work, um, and I do want to make sure that there are elements from specifically all of the council members that are in the third precinct to be able to weigh in um, on this. So, you know, I'm just absorbing all the information, and I appreciate the, the follow-up answers here. Yeah, and just to add some context, you know, finding out about this late Friday uh, nights doesn't leave a lot of time to engage your constituents around um, what they need um, and being blindsided. Because as you highlighted, you and I spent time drafting a legislative directive around 2,600 mini ha ha. This is a different site. It's in my ward, and many of my constituents want to make sure there's all sorts of information being given to them about how they're gonna be engaged in this process to give assurance that they are not being um, given just a third precinct and information about that that provides the most clarity and transparency about how this process is gonna go is the best right now. So that's what this legislative directive aims to accomplish. Councilmember Jenkins. And then I'd ask that we try to vote on this and move on to the next piece because we're running. Short. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, you know, I mean, we, we supported a similar legislative directive based around 2,600. So I, I'm okay with, with this legislative directive. I do think it necessarily is, you know, I, I would put number three is number one, and then you can come up with a list of services, activities, et cetera. So it seems a little, um, for lack of a better word, backwards um, in its approach to getting this information. But the information itself is, I think, appropriate but it has to have the community engagement first. I, I don't want a list from the mayor or the commissioner. I want community engagement and then come up with a list. Um, if so I would, I would love to see this legislative directive sort of recalibrated uh, to, to get the community engagement piece number three first and then ask the commissioner based on that to provide us with a list of services that are going to be in this facility. Can I uh, respond to that? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, 
In regards to a legislative directive, um, I believe you are aware, Council President, that we don't have any authority how the administration decides to respond to legislative directives and in what order. All we can do is present the lines of inquiry that we would like to receive information on. And ideally, the administration will fulfill that. That is in our legislative directive policy. So ideally, they should be able to provide um, a response to all three of these items in addition to what you're asking for, which is already included in 3B, which is community engagement frameworks. So I don't think there is a matter of order. We don't have authority over that piece, but it accomplishes exactly what you're asking as it's currently written. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask, I, I'm going to just add my own last note here is that that's true. Truly in legislative directives, we are not ordering the work that need be done. If this work is done in the order of 312, I think that's just fine um, with Council Member Wansley. Um, more agreeable to Council President Jenkins and others. But so long as the content is ready in an approved form, would you like us, Council Member Wansley, to vote on this legislative directive right now? Yes. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wamsley. Aye. Rainville. Aye. Vitar. Aye. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Jenkins. Aye. Chuktai. Aye. Koski. Abstain. Johnson is absent. Vice Chair Chavez. Aye. Chair Palmasano. Aye. There are 11 ayes and one abstention. Thank you. That directive carries and will be forwarded for final consideration at full council on Thursday. Um, next, we're going to go back to the motion that was introduced by Council Member Chavez. And we heard from our city attorney that this isn't an appropriate motion. Um, we had a little bit of a discussion about it, but in collaborating with Council Member Chavez, I would ask this that we send it forward without any recommendation to to Thursday and ask that the city attorney craft an appropriate motion that we could vote on that is acceptable by legal standards on Thursday, um, if that's possible. I recognize the risk there is that it won't be able to be published with a council agenda. So it would essentially be a substitute motion that council member Chavez would be bringing forward. Um, is that agreeable to you, council member Chavez? Yes. Uh, council member Chuck Dye. Um, okay, if that's if that's agreeable to the author, are we is that is that it? Or are we going to take a vote on that? Uh, we're going to need to vote to send it forward without recommendation, knowing that we'll likely have a substitute by Thursday. Got it. Understood. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I had gotten in queue earlier uh, to to speak to the motion brought forward by um, by Councilmember Chavez and and um, react to some of the discussion that. Um, has taken had taken place on that item specifically um, at that point. Um, and first, so I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly try to do that. Um, I wanted to address, um, you know, a, a few comments we've I've I heard um, earlier about, uh, you know, whether the the direction we were going in was having, you know, two different um, centers. Um, and and I think we took a we took a vote earlier today on 2633 Minnehaha, and it was clear that the consensus on this body did not exist to move forward with 2633 Minnehaha. So I don't think at this moment, at that moment, we were really talking about when we started considering um, the Cheatham Avenue um, uh, site. We weren't really talking about two different sites anymore. We're just talking about the one. Um, I, I think, um, and then I, I heard some brief comments from the, the city attorney about the motion itself being, being out of order. And, and I think I'm really struggling to understand um, where that's coming from, right? Um, the, the motion by council member Chavez and, and the motion um, by, by staff are, are word for word the same. Um, the only difference is, is um, the location 
of the site. And so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm having a tough time understanding why it's out of motion. And, and perhaps it's because it's about where the action is, is um, initiated from, the administration versus the council. And, and I think, you know, we've, we've brushed up on this a few different times. And I think each time um, it, we walk away uh, without a clear de delineation or a clear line in the sand um, on this issue. But I, I think it's important to remember here that, that we actually don't get the authority to act as, as a body um, because of the administration. That, that authority is, is inherent to, to how we exist. In fact, we create and fund the administration. Um, they effectuate the, the decisions that we make and carry those out. And so I, I, I think inherent with the ability to vote on something is the ability to change it, to amend it, to perfect it. Um, and I, I just, I think for me, substantively, that's why I disagree with um, the, the, um, the advice that this is out of order. Um, yeah, that's all I've got right now. I'm gonna ask the city attorney if she would be willing to respond and help us clarify why your decision, what the basis is of your decision. Sure. And uh, Chair Palmasano, council members, it, it really is about the initiation. It's kind of the separation of powers and as it's codified in the charter really talks about the mayor being exclusively the one that gets to direct and supervise the administration. So it's really about the, the initiation, kind of the way that the process is supposed to work is that the mayor identifies the location, directs the staff to gather all of the information. You know, many different questions were asked of Council Member Chavez about, you know, how much does the remediation cost? Da, 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 da. All of those things are things that the mayor directs the staff to develop that information with that information then brings forth the proposal, initiates the proposal and the request for authorization to the council and then the council is in the position of voting on whether to uh, authorize the administration to move forward with, with the money, with the purchasing um, and, and all of the expenditures that go along with that. So it's, it's really about, you know, Councilmember Shugtai is exactly right. It is about the initiation and who gets to initiate the process given the separation of powers. Um, you know, I am very happy to work with Councilmember Chavez to come up with, I don't know what the motion's gonna look like, but come up with something that hopefully addresses the issues and the concerns that he has and be able to bring something forward on, on Thursday that hopefully gets at what, what he's looking for and what would be helpful to this body, but within the bounds of, of separation of powers. All right, thank you. Councilmember Ellison? Um, yeah, I was just going to speak in support of uh, forwarding this without recommendation and, and uh, you know, happy to be a part of uh, and assist Councilmember Chavez or the attorneys in what this uh, gets, um, how this gets shaped. Uh, we all, uh, we also might need this. Uh, we, the, the motion 2.2 failed. So there was the question of, are we just going to have two precincts? Well, the question, the, uh, the answer is certainly no, because the motion failed here. So, um, and so I, that's another reason that I'm um, supportive of that. Uh, and then, you know, also I know that sometimes when these, um, you know, legal questions get asked, you know, it's all about interpretation and we've, you know, and obviously our council is qualified to give us the appropriate interpretation, but, uh, but also, um, you know, council gets to, sometimes that stuff just has to get hashed out in the courts. I'm not proposing that that's where we're going here, but I'm just saying that, that, it's a, that sometimes it can be a matter of interpretation. And so hopefully we can get to language that is permissible here. Uh, but yeah, urge my colleagues to support this motion. And um, the mayor did say, I know it was maybe not formal, but the mayor did say any site that he could get to seven on, uh, he would support. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is a site. Uh, that has a possibility of getting the seven, uh, and so uh, I think in that in that um, in that regard, I, I would hope that the spirit of this motion um, would be supported by uh, the administration, given uh, given that uh, sort of informal proclamation to to the press. So thank you. 
Councilmember Osman. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make mine quick. Uh, I think what Councilmember Chavez is doing is uh, he represents the community and he uh, here to help. And I would just, uh, you know, I, I respect uh, uh, the the power uh, of the um, city attorney talked about. Um, just the power separation, as she put it. I, I respect that. I understand that. But as a council members who are from the ward, we can help. We can, um, we have, we represent the community. So I would encourage definitely the, the, the administration to, you know, lead and uh, put us in that conversation. Uh, we want to help. I want to be able to help the community. Um, I want to be able to, uh, I know the community very well. I'm from the community. I represent the community. Uh, but keeping us in the dark, it, it is troubling. And I would encourage administration to come forward and work with council members that are from the community that are willing to help because we know the community, we represent the community. Um, the site of 2633 uh, is a site that I didn't have an issue with it, but you know, learning, I guess, just repeating learning that the opening day, it will not include community public safety center is troubling as I repeat it. I understand there are community engagement that requires us to, to do that, but uh, the community, what, what the community wanna see is community safety center on the opening day. Uh, with that, uh, I'm here uh, to help administration, the staff, the council members uh, to really move forward with a site that everyone is happy with. Thank you. So um, this next vote, I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll, is to take Council Ch Member Chavez's motion and forward it without recommendation such that the city attorney and Council Member Chavez have time to craft an appropriate motion that we can actually take a vote on on Thursday. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley. Aye. Rainville. No. Vita. Nope. Ellison. Aye. Osman. Aye. Goodman. No. Jenkins. Nay. Chuktai. Aye. Koski. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Chavez. Aye. Chair Pomisano. Aye. There are eight ayes and four nays. That carries, and we will work on doing that. I assume, Councilmember Chavez, as soon as something is ready, you would do everything you can to share it with us in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Um, next, we have our reports of committees. Committees that have met this cycle include four budget committees. So I will go ahead and ask Chair Koski to go ahead and summarize any decisions coming from them. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The budget committee is sending forward three items this cycle. Number one is appointed position in the Performance Management Innovation Department. Number two is appointed position in the Health Department. And number three is appointed position in the Office of Community Safety. I stand for questions. Not seeing any. Next is business inspections, housing, and zoning. Madam Vice President, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm sure the Budget Committee Chair um, meant to imply, remind people we have a budget hearing, the second of three tomorrow morning. Um, and just since we are in a broadcast capacity, it'd be good to remind people about that pu public hearing. Absolutely, thank you. Yes, we have our second public hearing tomorrow uh, in Council Chambers, 10 a.m. So that would be November 1st, 10 a.m., public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Biz Committee, chaired by Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. We have... 16 items being brought forward for approval on Thursday. Item number one is a license, as is item number two. Item two was moved forward with route recommendation, but I do intend to move it forward for approval on Thursday. Item number three is a open air motor vehicle parking lot ordinance. Item four is host approval for an affordable housing project at 901 27th Avenue South. Item five is issuing uh, the last part of our project financing for Wadag Commons, affordable housing project. This is at 1900 22nd Street East. Item six is a certificate of appropriateness that was granted for a project at 4708 Emerson. Item six are the liquor license approvals, seven are the renewals, eight is a rental license reinstatement, nine is a commemorative street name addition. Item 10 are the applications for our environmental grant funding round, and item number 11 
11 is the livable communities pre-development grants. Item number 12 is a financing application to support the acquisition and sale of investor-owned rental properties for affordable home ownership. Item number 13 is HICRA's financial assistance for affordable housing projects in the city, including one at 925 4th Street Southeast and 5637 Lindale Avenue South. Item 14 is approving some extensions and a reservation of funds for the Simpson Apartments. Item 15 and 16 are both program changes, both to the home ownership program as well as our um, owner-occupied rehab program. And I'm happy to answer any questions on any of those items. Thank you. Next, we have policy and government oversight, chaired by Councilmember Ellison. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the policy and government oversight committee are bringing forward 22 items for approval uh, and one with no recommendation. Uh, one is passage of a resolution for the third quarter donations reports. Two is a passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from local public health association of travel expenses, including registration and lodging. Three is passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from the climate generation of, tra of travel expenses, including flight, lodging, and meals. Four is passage of a resolution for gift acceptance from the University of South Florida Public Health Regenerative Leadership Synergy of Travel Expenses, including flights, hotel, and meals. Five is authoriz uh, authorizing collective bargaining agreements with IBEW Local 292 Electrical Technicians Units. Um, and six is accepting a rebid uh, for streetlight installation project. Seven is accepting a bid for demolition and debris removal at the Kmart site. Uh, eight is accepting a bid for property maintenance services. Nine is accepting a bid for pavement profiling and rental of roto milling services. 10 is accepting a bid for water and sewer service relocation. 11 is, is accepting a bid for concrete sidewalk curb and ADA PET ramps. Uh, 12 is authorizing contract with um, Stantec Consulting Services, Inc. for engineering and design services for the First Avenue North Re Street Reconstruction Project. 13 is authorizing contract with Tolts King Duval Anderson Associates for engineering and design services for the Cedar Lake Road Bridge over BNSF uh, Railroad Project. Uh, 14 is authorizing contract with Accenture L uh, LLP for data management technology services. Uh, 15 is authorizing contract with Hennepin Healthcare System Inc. for fire emergency medical services, education, and training. 16 is authorizing contract amendment with Kimley Horn and Associates Inc. for engineering and design services for Hennepin Avenue South Street Reconstruction Project. 17 is contract amendment with Rosedale Chevrolet LLC for General Motors OEM parts and services. Uh, 18 is authorizing contract amendment with the Clearwater uh, Analytics LLC for various investment services. 19 is authorizing contract amendment with Everlaw Inc. for e-discovery and redaction software. 20 is consenting to a lease agreement between United States uh, Army Corps of Engineers and Friends of the Falls for the ancillary lands around the upper St. Anthony Lock and Dam. 21 is approving a legal settlement of uh, the City of Minneapolis versus Leo A. Daly uh, and Ice Builders versus uh, V. Golden Industrial Refrigeration LLC, Stantec Consulting Services, Generator Studio LLC. Um, and 22 is uh, authorizing contract with Horseman Inc. for horse boarding, boarding services. This item was forwarded with no recommendation. Uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Um, I apologize, we had skipped over inadvertently intergovernmental relations, so I'll call on that chair, Councilmember Rainville, next. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The IGR committee is bringing forward one item for approval. It is the Nicollet Mall Legislative Directive approving a legislative director requesting information and data related to the process of converting Nickel Mall to a pedestrian, bicycle, and non-motorized vehicle public plaza and to initiate discussions with relevant downtown stakeholders on potential greening and other design elements. I'll stand for any questions. Thank you. Next, we have Public Health and Safety Committee chaired by Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Public Health and Safety Committee is bringing forward four items. Item one is accepting a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to address hate crimes. Item two is accepting a grant from the Department of Energy for the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program. Item three is accepting a grant from the Public Health Regenerative Leadership Synergy for a one-year leadership training program. Item four is the passage of a resolution adopting an ash tree 
treatment policy for the city. And I'd also like to just add that at PHS last week on item four, council members Ellison and Palmasano agreed that they would work together to refine the ash tree policy. So I'm um, expecting those, um, Th that policy change to come forward at the full council on Thursday, and I'll stand for any questions on these items. Thank you. Um, next, we have Public Works and Infrastructure. I believe Council Member Chugtai will be reading that. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice President. The Public Works and Infrastructure Committee will be bringing forward 11 items. Item number one is approval for bonding assessment and area way abandonment for the Hennepin Avenue South Re Street Reconstruction Project. Item number two is approving the annual levy of various Public Works Department special assessments. Item number three is approving an appropriation increase for water distribution improvements. Item number four is authorizing a right-of-way agreement with the federal government to access the Columbia Heights water treatment property. Item number five is authorizing utility easement agreement with the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board for a storm sewer outfall within the Minnehaha Parkway Regional Trail. Item number six is authorizing a temporary construction agreement with the University of Minnesota for bridge nine repairs. Item number seven is authorizing an agreement with Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway for storm drain infrastructure on BNSF property. Item number eight is approving a series of actions relating to a grant acceptance, public infrastructure improvements, and project plan approval for the North Transfer Station Revitalization Project. Item number nine is authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the Metropolitan Ec Council Environmental Services for sewer lateral repairs. Item number 10 is authorizing the designation of local funds as a match for a Minnesota deed grant for the Upper Harbor Terminal Public Infrastructure Street Reconstruction Project. And item number 11 is authorizing Public Works to apply for and host an AmeriCorps member through the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency's Green Corps program for the 2023 and 24 program year. I'll stand for questions. Thank you, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, I wanna mention preliminarily, we had reserved tomorrow for more discussion if necessary, and it turns out we're not going to need this extra time. Um, for now, we've concluded business to come before the committee today, and hearing no objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. For my colleagues in the public, I'll note again, we'll be meeting across the street at the Public Service Building, room 100, for a special joint meeting of the Committee of the Whole and the Charter Commission to begin at 4 p.m. Thank you, everyone.